Put me on, Jonathan. Turn this up. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I don't hear you. Hello, hello. Let's go, guys. Please get a seat. All right, church, let's sit down or stand up. Let's grab a hymnal and turn to page 61. Page 61. Everybody find a seat and grab a hymnal. I will start with 61, right? Yeah. Huh? Page 61, Oh the Deep, Deep Love. 61. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, vast, unmeasured, boundless, free, rolling as a mighty ocean in its fullness over me. Underneath me, all around me, is the current of thy love, leading onward, leading homeward, to my glorious rest above. Page 61. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus Spread His praise from shore to shore How He loveth, ever loveth Changeth never, never more how he watches o'er his loved ones, died to call them all his own. How for them he intercedeth, watcheth o'er them from the throne. All right, page 478, 478, Constantly Abiding. There's a peace in my heart that the world never gave, a peace it cannot take away. Though the trials of life may surround like a cloud, I've a peace that has come there to stay. Constantly abiding, Jesus is mine. Constantly abiding, rapture divine. He never leaves me lonely, whispers oh so kind. I will never leave thee, Jesus is mine. All right, hold on. Before we go on to verse 2, when we go into the chorus, this side of the church over here on the left, you guys are going to sing the top part of the chorus. This side on the right, you're going to sing the bottom part. So over here is going to go, constantly abiding. Over here, this side is constantly abiding, constantly abiding. I'll help you guys out the first time. You guys ready? All right, verse 2. Oh, sing of a Savior and King When peace sweetly came to my heart Troubles all fled away and my night turned to day. Blessed Jesus, how glorious Thou art. Constantly abiding, constantly abiding. Jesus is mine, yes, Jesus is mine. 
Constantly abiding, constantly abiding, rapture divine, oh rapture divine. He never leaves me, never leaves me lonely, whispers, whispers, oh so kind. I will never, never leave thee, Jesus, Jesus is mine. This treasure I have in a temple of clay, while here on this footstool I roam. But he's coming to take me to some glorious day, over there to my heavenly home. Constantly abiding, Jesus is mine, oh Jesus is mine. Constantly abiding, rapture divine, oh rapture divine. He never leaves me lonely, whispers, whispers, oh so kind. I will never leave thee, Jesus is mine. All right, you can all have a seat. Hey, Anthony, you made it. Praise the Lord. Tim, you pick up. Praise the Lord. Good stuff. Hey, church. It's a good, good, t- a good day to be in church, isn't it? I appreciate seeing all the faces. Some I haven't seen in a long time, and some I see all the time, which is good. But uh, yeah, we're happy to see Big Billy back. Give a big amen to him and his family. Uh, appreciate them. Glad to see them here. Uh, Anthony made it. Thank you, Tim. Picking them up, helping them out. Feeling okay, buddy? Good, good, good. All right. Uh, Joanne's husband, Brian's here. You can say hello to Brian. Brian. Uh, Big Jim made it back. Amen, buddy. Big Jim's here, too. Good stuff. My daughter surprised me. My wife surprised me yesterday. I was in my office finishing up my studies, and I wasn't feeling too good Friday. So my neck was killing me, but it's much better now. And they came, they were here outside the door. So Brenda dropped me off here, so I didn't drive the other day. And then she says, uh, come on up, we're ready, uh, I'm ready to leave. So come on out then. I come outside, and Jen and I were standing outside the door. I mean, I'm really like, what? I, it took me about five minutes to understand what really had taken place. I couldn't, I, I'm like, w- w- I don't get it. What, did they get transported here? What happened? <laughs> like Philip in the book of Acts got, got transported. But I'm glad to see them, so thank they made it back. That was a great surprise for me. So, well, we're going to have a couple of, let's get somebody offering the offering envelopes. Who's going to help that? Matthew, Zach, come on down, Matthew. Here he is, buddy. Very good. Okay, uh, if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand, and he's going to give you one. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. Hey, Nancy. Good morning. Phil, you need to slip back out here. And Sean. Thanks. Okay. 
So everybody all squared away? You got your, writing out those big checks. I'll take time, man. <laughs> Write them out. Hey, a lot of zeros, a lot of zeros there. Oh, that's, that doesn't work there. Okay, good to see you, Louie, man. All right, let's have a word of prayer for the offering. Bill? In church, Father God, just pray you meet with us and speak to our hearts individually, Lord. Help us to grasp what the message that you have for us to give. And we pray that you have uh, this money go where you will, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we have a couple of birthdays to recognize today, so Chantal, why don't you come on down? Now, Renee usually comes down because she's the day after me. Chantal, it's a couple of days before, but Renee, we sank last week because she was here. All right, hers was the fourth, mine is Tuesday. So anybody else birthday at this time of year? John, same, like, like me, right? Is he the, oh, he's earlier. Dog don't count. Oh, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> All good? Yeah. Lizette? Yeah, they're not be here. Come on. Yeah. Come down, Lizette. Let's go. Wow. Perfect. Yeah. Come down, Lizette. There she is. Praise the Lord. There she goes. Absolutely. She's so sweet. What a precious young lady. You're beautiful. Yeah, you're all beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's beautiful. All right, somebody start out. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joe. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Born again means salvation. All right, Lizette, now you are a junior in high school, correct? And I know you want to have sights set for being a veterinarian, I hear, right? And you're pursuing that? Yeah. Good, terrific. Well, I'm happy you got baptized this year, correct? That was a big thing for her this year, so we appreciate that. And you've been saved probably many years ago, but I'm glad you got baptized this summer. It worked out well, right? Do you have anything you'd like to say? No. All right. Oh, uh, love you, Lizette. God bless you. All right, now be seated. God bless you guys. What I have to say, I'll, I'm going to say before I preach, because it's a little bit of a testimony to what took place in my life. So, um, we have any, we have nursery tonight? Herbie, how is your wife? Where's Herbie? How's your wife feeling? She is, okay. And, and Hannah's not sick anymore? Oh, well, thank God. That's scary. When little, she had the flu this week, Hannah, oh. and and Erin's pregnant, ready. So when is the date now for Erin? Uh, wow! All Souls Day, All Saints Day. 
Oh, Saints Day, yeah. Okay. November 1st. All right, very good. Well, before I get started then, we're going to... You can open your Bibles to Numbers chapter 13. You remain seated for a minute. Then when I start to read, you can stand up. So I'll give you a, a reprieve for a moment. Numbers chapter... It's fine, Numbers chapter 13. So when I ask you to stand up, you know where we're going to be starting from. Say hello to John for me. Wish my birthday also. Numbers 13. When you find that, then look up here. And I'll start by telling you a little bit about this date for me. All right. So today is October 6th. My birthday is the 8th, Tuesday. But the beautiful thing about this date, in my mind, it has special meaning for me because uh, this date, October 6th, 1996, a long time ago. We were living in Brooklyn and I was the assistant of the church in Brooklyn and at that time it was in the process of transitioning to start a church out here. So October 6th turns out to be the last service that we had in my house and the beautiful part about that is that the pastor at the time, Pastor Militello, had asked me to preach that service months earlier because he had to go somewhere that day. He said, I need you to preach October 6th. I said, well, sure. You know, that's fine. Great. So October 6th, I'm preparing to preach. The things unfold and developed, again, opening, closing doors, as I talked about in Sunday school, that that turned out to be the last service in my house in Brooklyn. And the next week, the church was able to go into a building in Sheepshead Bay. I mean, in um, Bay Ridge. Right, thank you. So as they, but that was the date. Chantal, October 13th was the first service they had in that Bay Ridge Chapel. Well, October 6th was the last day. What that meant to me was this, was an answer to prayer. See, my prayer had been, and this was private, I mean public now, but it was private between me and God. I said, Lord, if you want me to pastor, I will never, and this is the God's honest truth, I'll never ask the church to leave my house. You have to, if you want me to pastor, you get it out. I'm not going to kick it out to expedite my desire, I said, if you want it out, you get it out. And I left it at that. That was, a, that was maybe a month earlier. And then I got the call to come out and uh, to preach, you know, to, to, to have the last service. And it turned out that God had worked it all out. Because when I had got that call from Pastor Bob that the building had been given, they left the church that would have been there. And we could take possession as of October 13th. That was already determined this was planned months before when they asked me to preach. So again, for me, it was a very special day. Yeah. It was, the, and, and I remember that that day, Billy, Billy, I remember you were there. I remember you were there. I remember. <laughs> My memory's better, believe me. You were there. I, you were there. No, but that's unusual because we were in Brooklyn. He didn't often come to Brooklyn. But I remember you being there. I remember, I remember the Wallers were there. And the rest of our church was there. We, we were packed out that day. It was in my house. It was in the living room. But that meant special, that was a special day for me because it was a send-off for the start of this church. Amen? Amen? All right, stand up now, and that's my little story. I do, I need a little water. Yeah, I'm parched. I do. Oof. Oof, what's down here? Here, what's down here? Sorry. Just throw that out. Don't mind. Let's get rid of the thing. <laughs> Captain's Courageous, the name of the message today. Captain's Courageous. Thank you, Timmy. So in first, I mean in uh, Numbers chapter 13, I'd like you to look at verse <clears throat> 20. Look at verse 1. Verses 1, we'll start 1, 2, and then verse 25. Then we'll pray a little more. All right, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying... Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among, among them. Come down with me to verse uh, 25. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, 
and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. 30. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. All right, Brother Sean, lead us in a word of prayer. We ask you to bless this service, Lord God. We ask you to meet and speak with us through our past and through the message. And it's in Jesus' precious name, my friend. Amen. It is. So, I just read a couple of verses in chapter 13. For those who are familiar with the story, basically it's a very, it's an account of Jews going into Israel. All right, They just got left Egypt and they wandered a little bit. It wasn't too long. They send out spies to go into the land. They send 12 spies out. They search the land for 40 days. They come back after 40 days. Ten of the spies have a negative report because they're afraid of what they see. And two spies, Joshua and Caleb, captains courageous, said, oh no, we see the same trouble, but we can possess it. See, God gave us this land. He promised us this land. Why shouldn't we go? First thing I'd like to say about Joshua and Caleb or the captains courageous is that they had courage. Listen, if you want to make it as a Christian, you need to have courage. The, 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 the courage doesn't mean that you, that you have no obstacles or no fears. Courage is facing your fear with God's grace. It's overcoming what you see. Remember I mentioned a while ago I preached, we see fear, but we hear faith. See, when you got saved, you heard something that changed your life. But when we look around, around our situations, we see fear. And if we base our decisions based on what we see, we won't go forward for the Lord. So here, when they searched out the land, they said there was giants in verse 28. Walled cities, sons of Anak. If you know sons of Anak, they were giants. Like Goliath. Imagine seeing guys like Goliath that will make Big Bill look small. And if you make Big Bill look small, you're big. And these giants were like 10 feet tall. And they were like, they, we, we, we can't stop these guys. Walled cities. How can we possibly go in there and defeat them? So they said, look, look, uh, you know, Moses, had, he, he, he's supposed to hear from God, tell us to go in. I can't, I'm not going in there. So they came back and they said, okay, we searched out the land, what would you find? Oh, we found pomegranates and figs and uh, uh, grapes. And, and they found all this great fruit. They came back. They were carrying the grapes were so big. I mean, it was amazing. So they come back with all this great fruit. And they say, it, land is great, land of milk and honey. But with that, yeah, I see some problems, though. And uh, these giants, they don't want to let us come in. They're not going to let us take their land. I, I don't think it's a bad idea. Let's not go there. Joshua and Caleb felt differently. And Caleb said in verse 30, one more time, take a look at verse 30. And Caleb still the people. said, oh, guys, quiet down. Watch. Before Moses said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to possess it. I mean, if God, listen, if God promises you something, or God shows you what you're going to do in your life, don't let obstacles stop you from the, fulfilling what God, God's will for your life. What you do is pray. Joshua and Caleb, like, listen, we're not going to let these giants stop us because God is on our side. Amen. Listen, think about this for a minute. When they came out of Egypt, they, had, they, they were an army. The Bible called e Israel an army. They had no weapons. That was a weaponless army. Their only weapon was God. Amen? Amen? How did they get out from Egypt, the strongest nation in the world at that time, with no weapons? They just followed Moses. And God, through Moses, worked miracles. And those miracles proved he was who he said he was. And that little by little, that the Egyptians eventually bowed out after the death of the firstborn. So then they were able to pass over. And they exited. Hence the book is called Exodus. And they leave. After 40, after many years in uh, 215 years in Egypt they leave but when they come out now they're out don't forget they saw these miracles they saw the Red Sea part they saw that now they're supposed to go and take this promised land land of Canaan, Israel and they see giants and they go we can't do that it's like our memories as Christians are very short sometimes we forget the blessings that God did for us last week that's why it's good to be thankful listen all the time 
or I just mentioned in Sunday school. Be, give thanks in everything. And as you thank God for th this little simple blessing you have in life, things will go better for yourself. So they were like, wait a minute, you know, God just parted the Red Sea. Who did that? If he told us to go in this land, he's going to protect us going into this land. Amen? Amen? That was Caleb's position. Caleb was courageous, though. And so was Joshua. And I'm going to tell you something, church. If you're going to make it as a Christian and succeed, you need courage. Daniel had courage. Daniel had courage. Being thrown into that lion's den because he knew he did nothing wrong and God prayed and God protected him. Daniel had great courage. Moses had courage. David had courage. When he went to fight Goliath and Saul, King Saul says, well, you're just a youth. You can't do that. He said, you know what I did? I killed a lion and I killed a bear with my bare hands. I grabbed him. I stuck a, I, he killed a lion and a bear. David is a young boy. So when Saul heard that, he said, oh, okay, maybe you are a good candidate. <laughs> We'll send you out to fight Goliath. And you know what happens. But David had courage. Abraham had courage. You know, he was called to leave the Ur of Chaldees. He was 75 years old. Hello? 75? You know what happens when you get older? You get comfortable. You get used to your environment. I know what I like and I like what I know. <laughs> and I'm not ready to walk away now. At 75 years old, he heard God's voice. He listened to him. And he, and he left. That's why Abraham had a lot of courage. And the greatest courage demonstrated of all was our Lord. Our Lord Jesus. Listen, when he's man and he's God. But as man, he felt the pain. Going to Calvary. He felt the pain. He knew as God what it would entail. So he's praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. If it's possible, Lord, let this cup pass. He's praying that. Because he knows as God, he's going to be, become sin, who knew no sin. He's going to become the embodiment of sin. It'll be sin personified. And he didn't want, he didn't want that because he was sin. But as that was the, hum, the divine side. The human side, he's going to be nailed to a cross, whipped and beaten within an inch of his life. That's horrible. He knew that. And the Lord still went through with the plan. That's courage. That's why it says, consider him yeah. who endured such contradiction to sinners against you himself. They should be wearied and faint in your minds. The idea that you should consider Christ, we go through our struggles. To have courage. You know, years ago, on a very small scale, when I left my career, a lot of people thought I was crazy. So why would you do that? You're doing so well. But in my desire to serve and teach and preach is what I wanted to do. Because I knew it's what God put in my heart. And so I was willing to leave that and say, I, I didn't view it as a courageous move. I just felt it as I needed to do that. But looking back at it, if I thought too much about it, I might not have wanted to do, I might not have wanted to do it. Right. It took courage to walk away from what took me 20 years to build. And those that are in business understand that. But the fact of the matter is, I'm thankful I did it. I have no regrets, thank God. But I needed courage to do that. A lot of people viewed that as great courage. I remember my accountant calling me thinking I was crazy. But that's okay. But the courage we need is to go forward is to not say there's no obstacles. Caleb saw the same giants that the other ten spies saw. Right. He saw the same walled cities. He, we could see the same obstacles. I'm not, I wasn't dumb. I knew what I was leaving and what I was starting. I was aware I wasn't going to be at the same level economically. But I, I understood that. I took that. I was, wasn't blindsided. And with that, I said, no, I still want to go forward. Amen. And church, let me ask you something. If you're going to be a Christian and you're going to go forward as Lord, you have to have courage. You have to have courage. And when you don't feel like courage, say, God, give me courage. Strengthen my heart. I'm afraid. Sometimes you say, there's nothing wrong with saying that, Lord, I'm afraid of this situation. What am I going to do? You need courage to face it. You'll be okay. A lot of times God doesn't remove the situation, but he gives you courage to go through it. A lot of times we pray God remove them. Sometimes he might. You never know what God will do. Maybe he'll remove that situation because it's just too unbearable. And sometimes it just gives you the courage to get through it. And when you get through it, you look back on it how I got through that. But God gave you the courage. Amen? Amen. Secondly, I'd like you to look at verses uh, 31 to 33. Same chapter.
31 to 33. <clears throat> but the men that went up with him said, watch it, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. No doubt, that's a true statement. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched out into the children of Israel, saying, The land by which we have gone to search out, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. Verse 33, And there they we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came up with the giants, and we in our own sight as grasshoppers, so we were in their sight. So after Caleb's impassioned speech to say, listen, we're able to take this, what happens immediately after he's got the courage to say that and to go forward, he experiences conflict. Point one, you need courage. Point two, there'll be conflict. There'll always be conflict in your life. As you're going along that journey to get to where God wants you to get there, get, get God wants you to go, don't think it's going to be without conflict or without resistance. But that doesn't mean it's not right. If God puts it in your heart to do something and you know God has shown you that, and you've prayed about it and you've read about it or however God confirmed that to you, and God has a way of confirming things. <laughs> and God can do anything he wants. And when you know, when you're listening to the Lord, he'll show you yay or nay. And he, and he clearly showed them this is the land I want you to take. So the fact that there was going to be conflict did not stop Joshua and Caleb, but it stopped the other ten. And the majority went out. And they, they, they railed against Moses and Joshua and Caleb. said, we're not going up. We're not going to do that. Conflict along the way is going to make you stronger Amen. When, you, when you deal with it. You know, a lot of times we avoid conflict, and you should when it's over things that are not really important. You don't need to major in the minors. You don't need to argue over things that don't really matter. But you know when your faith is being challenged or what you need to do to go forward, you have to hang in there because, again, there's going to be conflict. When, think about this. When Jerusalem, Solomon built a temple, roughly 1000 B.C., stood for almost 500 years. When the Babylonians came in in 586 and destroyed the temple. Do you know they destroyed the temple? And they destroyed the temple, by the way, twice. Not the Babylonians, but it was destroyed twice. Do you know that? Anybody know it was destroyed in the same day? Amen. Same day. Both times. It's called Tisha B'av. The Jews re, uh, celebrate Tisha B'av. It's in August. Anyway, Babylon comes in and destroys the temple that Solomon built, which was the most magnificent structure and edifice built. It was unbelievable. It was the heart of their culture, their worship. It represented God. So, it, and they said, there's no way, Jeremiah would tell the king, there's no way we, you could destroy a temple. This is God's house. Temple is house of God. So he says, no way it's going to happen. But it happened. Well, they destroy it. Seven years get sent into captivity. When they come back, under Ezra's leadership, and Zerubbabel is the builder. The book is called Ezra. But the book of Ezra is about Zerubbabel building the temple. And then Ezra gets in the picture many chapters later. <laughs> but Zerubbabel built this temple. And watch what happens. He's building the temple, rebuilding it, rebuilding a second temple, destroyed. They're going well until a decree from Metaxerxes says, stop the building. Because was, he was poisoned in his mind. They were saying bad things about the Jews. So they stopped. They issued a decree to stop the building. Now, the building was of God. They wanted to build that, to rebuild that temple. But God allowed a 15-year interruption in the building process. And you might look at it and say, why? I don't know, except the enemy wants to stop you from doing God's will. Amen. So there was, a, there was a stoppage, 15 years. And during that time, you know what they said? Well, I thought God wanted us to build this temple. What's going on? How come it didn't? How come it stopped? Because when God wants you to do something, it doesn't mean there's not going to be opposition and conflict to stop it from getting done. So in your life, whether it's 15 years, that in this case the building was stopped and then eventually it started up and they finished the building. Well, there might be some obstacles in your life as you go forward. Again, don't let the obstacles define you. Don't let the obstacles stop you from going forward for the Lord. The Bible says I could do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. 
Don't let temporary setbacks determine your future. Right. You know, every time if you get <clears throat> discouraged about something and it didn't go your way and you quit, you're never going to succeed in anything. Amen. Yep. Do you know that, I'll give you a sports illustration, that Mariana Rivera, okay, the greatest closer of all time, yep. is the only player in Major League history to get voted to the Hall of Fame unanimously. 100%. Nobody, N Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle, nobody ever got 100% of the vote. Nobody. Sandy Colfax, the greatest pitcher ever lived, not 100%. Maybe 95, 96. Tom Seaver, 96. Hey, the only one that got 100% was Mariano Rivera. But wh why am I saying that? He started as a starting pitcher. He didn't make it as a starting pitcher. They didn't think his stuff was that good. So they put him in the bullpen. Let's try him out there. <laughs> he was a setup man for a couple of years, and all of a sudden the guy left for the Yankees, Wetland, and he takes over, and the rest is history. So had he quit, was he wasn't going to be the starting pitcher, the greatest closer of all time would have never been. I mean, there's so many stories like that. Kurt Warner, I'll give you a football one. Kurt Warner, who's a Christian, won a couple of Super Bowls with the Rams, was out of football. Out, done, nobody wanted to touch him. He goes, plays in Europe, and he start, he's doing well. And the quarterback for the Rams gets hurt that year. Trent Green breaks his leg, he's done his career. They get Kurt Warner, sign him up as a backup, stick him in. What does he do? He wins a Super Bowl that year. Wins the Super Bowl. He was out of football. Michael Jordan got cut from his high school basketball team. How dumb was that coach? <laughs> Shoof, are you kidding me? But the idea that people, if you let failure stop you, where are you going to go? Oh, you think because I was sold in New York City? I was a pretty good salesman. I sold, I did well. Hey, there was plenty of people that rejected me. I would walk up and I'd see the sign said receptionist. You know what I, it said to me? Rejectionist. <laughs> slam the door in your face get out of here we don't need you and then after a while you get discouraged but you can't quit amen, amen. so don't quit church they have conflict you're going to have conflict that's part of being a Christian face it with courage and say you know what God you told me to do this I'm going to do it amen. I'm going to do it I'm going to be okay everybody here everybody here has stories everybody has an account I'm just telling you some personal things everyone here about having conflict in your life, trying to get to where you need to be. But when you get there, and you look back, you know what you say? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for getting me through that. Thank you I didn't quit. I didn't give up, right. Thank you, Lord. And you need courage. Pray for it. And don't be surprised when conflict comes. It doesn't mean you're doing wrong. It means you're on the right path. Look at something else I'd like to read to you. Look at chapter 14, verses 8 and 9. Numbers. Captains, courageous. The reason I'm preaching this is the message I preached 23 years ago. I mean, I don't remember my points then. I couldn't tell you that. But I do remember this was the portion. I remember the chapters. And I didn't remember my points, though. I remember the title. Same title. Amen. <clears throat> Billy was there. He, he, he could tell you the points. <laughs> Now, if, uh, if uh, maybe Debbie was there, she may have taken notes on it, so it would be different. <laughs> <clears throat> Where were you in 95, Debbie? 96 that year. Pensacola? Idaho. All right, look at Numbers 14, <clears throat> verses 8 and 9. If the Lord delight in us, <clears throat> then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. That's the famous expression of the land of Israel. A land, the promised land, the land of milk and honey, the glorious land, the pleasant land. All those terms refer to Israel. Only, verse 9, rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Now watch. Fear them not. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, what, you know what's going on? It's a, there's a tennis match, ping pong. They're going back and forth. One group is saying, we can't go in. They're going to kill us. The other group is saying, no, we're going to go in. 
This is bread for us. I mean, God has appointed this land to us. He's going to make a way to let it happen. Sometimes in Christian, in our lives, there's blessings that we miss because we're afraid to go forward because of the conflict that tries to stop us. And you miss the blessing that God has for you. I've been asked many times by Christians saying, well, Pastor, why didn't this work out? Or how come he didn't do this or she didn't do that? And it, maybe that wasn't God's will. No, it wasn't that it wasn't God's will. They weren't listening to God. Because God's will might, can, be, can be thwarted by your will. Do you believe that? Watch, I guarantee that's true. I tell you know why? It's God's will that all men be what? Saved. Are all men saved? No. Why? Because their own will says nay. So God's will that all men be saved is that's, the, that's God's desire. But man, stubborn and stiff necked. I got in the neck. All right, Lord, I'm sorry. But we rebel against that clear commandment that you must be born again. You need to be saved. And when you do that, thank God, then you get accepted in the beloved. But God's will can be thwarted, not just for salvation, but even in Christians' lives that God is opening a door and trying to do something. And, and it doesn't come together right because some don't see it the right way. You don't have to live it for someone else. You've got to live it for yourself. And if you're going to follow God's will, God's going to bring somebody along for you that believes like you to help you carry on. Amen. Everybody needs somebody to go through life with. Amen? Get, go through your Christian journey with. It helps. Amen? Amen? Third point, I just read, they were consistent. They had courage, they had conflict, and here, they were consistent. See, consistency is the key. Uh, you could start and stop, start and stop, start and stop, and you'll always be in that mode. Until you get to the point where you make up your mind, you determine yourself, like song, song 389 on hymnal, I am resolved no longer to linger. With that, you've got to be resolved no longer to linger, no longer to vacillate, no longer to sit on the fence, as it were. You want to get into the fray. You want to be a Christian. You want to get involved. And you want to be consistent. Being consistent is a very important aspect of a Christian. Our Lord was consistent in his ministry. He was able to go to Calvary and fulfill the Father's plan. Joshua and Caleb were consistent. They heard the cries of the opposition. They knew there was trouble. But yet they said, no, we should go in and take it. We could do this. They didn't, they believed, the ten spies didn't, they saw the same things, they didn't believe. Joshua and Caleb saw the same trouble, but they believed. So what they did is they allowed their faith to overcome their fear. And either your faith's going to win out or your fear's going to win out. Right. And if you, let, if you look around too long and keep your eyes off here yeah. and start looking like this, you're going to see fear. Because there's fear to be found. And it's, it's not imaginary. It's not a phantom fear. There could be some real fears out there. And what do you do about it? Faith. God, direct me. Protect me. Guide me. Keep us safe. And show me the path you want me to go on. You need to be consistent. You need to be consistent. Let me give you a few examples. You should be consistent in your church attendance. Amen. You should be. You should, go, you should want to go to church. No? Yeah. Say amen. 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 Come to church. You should be consistent in your Bible reading. Amen. You should be consistent in prayer. You should be consistent in trying to do good deeds and help and making yourself available. You should be consistent in these areas. If you do, it, good things are going to happen for you. Just be consistent. You know, I think back again in my own life. I remember my pastor when we first started out. I mean, you know, I was raised differently in, in the Christian faith than a lot of Christians are. My wife and the coys know and <laughs> Sean. I mean, Pastor Bob has, has great points and has weak points. But he was brilliant. And he knew a lot. And, and, and I remember him telling me at the very beginning, we're going, before church even started, we used to go to one every month, sit and get like an eight-hour lesson, get blasted, and be teaching me, right? Camille would cook dinner, and we'd eat and enjoy it. Well, I remember him going to me, okay, I'm going to give you a couple of books to read. And go to the shelf and he'd pick out a few books, give them to me. Because he goes, I don't know if I'll ever see you again. 
So that's the, you know, that was his, well, you read it. I, don't, you know. I said, no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm interested. I want to read this. And I read them all. I, came, I only didn't read one that he gave me. I didn't like it. But I read all of them. And I came back, and I would, he would talk to me about it, and then he'd give me more. But he, I said, yeah, is, you don't know who I am. If I sink my teeth into something, and I believe this is what God wants me to do, I'm going to do it. Amen. And that's why I've been independent in my mind, my thinking. I'm going to go forward. Amen. So I took those books, I read it, I devoured it, I learned. And then he saw I was consistent. Yep. And when I see someone's consistent, I know there's great hope for them because they're not going to let the little things of life throw their curveball so bad that they're going to quit on God. Amen. Amen. Be consistent. You know, I can imagine, again, give you an illustration in, in sports. I remember uh, baseball, great baseball player. Uh, offhand, who was a home run hitter. Forget offhand. Modern day. In one game, it wasn't Sammy Sosa or Mark McGuire back then or Alex Rodriguez. It was someone really good. Struck out five times in the one game. Not four, which is the golden sombrero. Yeah. He struck out five times in one game, which is bad. <laughs> I mean, that's really bad, right? But, but then, you know, the next game, he had a home run to get back on track. He didn't, you can't quit. Yeah. Amen. Hey, you want to hear a statistic real quick? Give you, give you a baseball statistic. My opinion, probably the greatest player who played the game record was Joe DiMaggio. I have my reasons for thinking that. But Joe DiMaggio, check this out. In one year, I'm not talking about one weekend or two weeks of the season or a month. One year, roughly 550 at-bats. Somebody tell me how many times Joe DiMaggio struck out in one year. He has the record. I don't think anybody will come close to that. I don't think anybody will touch this record. Forget his 56-game hitting streak. How many times did he strike out in one year? He, he doesn't strike out, Jordan Maggio. I mean, put it to you this way. Guys like, you know, home run hitters, Reggie Jackson, or uh, the big guy, they would strike out 200 times a year. 200 times a year. So you use that as a, as a number. How many times did this guy strike out? 12. 12 times in a year. Some guys strike out 12 times in a series. Yeah, really. Come on. If you saw the game last night, which I didn't, I saw it today, the Houston Astros. They beat up on the uh, Tampa, Bay. Tampa Bay, right? Tampa Bay. Three to one. Fifteen strikeouts that do that, yeah. Garrett Cole. Cole. Yeah, one game. Yeah. But the point is, how, you know what Joe DiMaggio was? He was consistent. Yeah. He'd always get a hit. I mean, that, that's like life, man. You've got to just be consistent. Stay at something if you want to be good at it. Don't quit. Be consistent in reading your Bible. Just stay at it. Come to church. Yeah. Give to the work of the Lord. Just be Doc texted me before. I haven't seen Doc in a long time. He came back from Africa. He says, you're on the big screen at, at the office. So he said, I'm like, oh, God, God bless you. <laughs> Hope I don't scare anybody away. Be consistent. You know, that's what, that's what, that's what God's looking for. Just consistency. You know, sometimes we think you have to be great at something. Um, you really don't have to be great at anything. Just be consistent. <laughs> Just, you know, everybody has an ability that's unique to them. Everybody could bring something to the table. Yeah. Amen. If everybody was the same thing, you know, it would be like the Stepford Wives, right? That'd be really boring, wouldn't it? Yeah. Man, everybody looked the same, everybody acted the same, talked the same. That'd be really boring. Yeah. Everybody had the same, everybody had, what is that? It'd be terrible. If everybody had the same ability, everybody was good at the same thing, they'd be fighting each other all the time. I mean, everybody has different strengths and weaknesses. That's what makes a church. That's what makes the body of Christ work. Amen. Be thankful that God has given you the ability he's given you, and don't be ashamed to use it for the glory of God. Amen. I mean, when I, was, when I was starting out and in my training and watching Dr. Rockman, he would draw and preach. Now, I can't draw. And I can't, but no one said I had to. But, but, you know, some of the mentality, you, you look at, oh my gosh, and, you know, he's drawing, he's quoting scripture, and he's drawing stuff. It's amazing. You yeah. can't do that, right? Remember, uh, somebody asking me after I even preached for, I was at a meeting, and a young preacher came up to me and said, man, these guys are here, Dr. Ruckman and these big shots, how, how are you going to preach in front of them? I said, I'm afraid to say anything. I can't tell them anything they don't know. I said, who says you're talking to them? Just tell them what you do know. You're not going to surprise him. That, that I can tell you. 
He knows what you're going to say. He's read the Bible a thousand times. Yes, he knows it. Okay. But that doesn't mean you don't still have something you could offer. Amen. Just be yourself. Amen. Brother Lynch is lying to me. It was Joe. Just be yourself. <laughs> and I took it. You're you. I'm me. Be who you are. Amen. Amen. All right. So they were consistent. Joshua and Caleb consistent. We love them. They're captains courageous. Let's, let's look at one last one. Chapter 14 again. Look at verse 30. Verse 30. Chapter 14. Verse 30. <clears throat> Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear uh, to make you dwell therein, because they, they rebelled, and they, by the way, for those who aren't familiar, the 40 days they searched out the land, every day they searched it out, God tacked on a year. He said, you searched 40 days, and now you don't want to go in? You're going to wander 40 years. That was payback for the disobedience. So he said, okay, you don't wander 40 years. You're not going to go into the land. But look what he says here. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land, concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save or accept, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. So only the captain's courageous, Joshua and Caleb, were going to make it in. You know, how, you know how powerful that is? There was 603,000 men that came out of Egypt. Rough round up, 6,000, 6,000, 6, I think it was. Came out of Egypt, not counting women and children. Of all those 603,000 men, only two, give me, give me a percentage of that, <laughs> only two made it in. And the rest died in the wilderness because of their lack of belief. And their children that they use as an excuse to say we can't go in, our kids will die, all the children made it in. And the ones who squawked didn't make it in. Don't let the obvious stop you from doing what God wants you to do. Or it seems impossible. But our God is greater than the impossible. Amen. <laughs> That's why they put him in a tomb and they sealed it and they covered it. They said, he can't break out of that. Up from the grave, he arose. <laughs> and he busted through those chains, those wax seals to show the road. They moved that stone out of the way. Are you kidding me? You can't stop God. God's on your side. Who can stop you? The old line was God and myself are a majority. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one. Verse 34. Skip to 34. And after the number of days you searched out the land, even 40 days, each day for a year, shall you bear your iniquities, even 40 years, you shall know my breach of promise. Verse 37. Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. 38. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to search the land, say it last with me, last two words, lived still. Come on, it's good, right? Live still. They lived. They were conquerors. You're more than a conqueror through him that loves you. Come on. Romans 8, 37. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Listen, God has devised a way, a system for us to live that one day we will live forever with him in heaven. Uh, that's where you're destined for if you are saved and trusted Christ. Don't let the temporary obstacles of life stop you. Go forward. Fulfill God's plan in your life. Go try God. Do what you got to do. It seems everything seems impossible. With fear, if you look through the lens of fear, I can't do this. I can't do that. Well, you you can if you don't try. But maybe God will allow you to do it. Amen. Amen. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Years ago in uh, LaGuardia Airport, a plane took off, and uh, there was a lot of uh, pigeons. They hang out around there. And it got caught in that engine. And Captain Solenberg had just taken off and was flying that 737 or 747, what it was. Big plane. A lot of people on board, 200 and some odd people. He's going over the uh, Hudson. No, yeah, uh, 
he went, he landed in the Hudson River, but he took off from uh, JFK. He's going over the East River. And eventually he makes it around. Not soon after he took off, the birds destroyed the engine. He's got an engine. He's got to sail. He's got to land a plane. He couldn't get back. He, a miracle, he was able to go past Manhattan and come between Manhattan and Jersey, Hudson River. And he lands that plane in January of that year in the Hudson River. And everybody lived. Amen? That's unbelievable. You talk about nerves of steel. He knew what had happened. He didn't panic. He was calm. He said, we've got to land this baby. Uh, you don't, you're not going to make it back to J LaGuardia. Ah, go to Hudson. <laughs> it was amazing. And Sullenberg got recognized for that. And they even made a movie about him. And Tom Hanks played the Sullenberg. But the idea that he had the presence of mind, the courage. He's faced, he, listen, if he just panicked, <laughs> those died, they all died. He didn't panic. And he had courage to go forward. And he had skill. And he used everything God put in him for such a time as this. To bring him. And when they, we saw that plane land in the Hudson River, everybody got out. That was unbelievable. That was an incredible account of what can be done. If we let, again, obstacles that are going to be there prevent you from going on to be a Christian, you've got to check your faith and say, Lord, give me more faith. Give me some courage. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to succeed. I want to finish that race that you put me on. I'm going to conquer fear. There's sometimes you have some fears in life that are real and some are phantom. You know the real ones. And you ask God to help you. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And you face it. And we're going to pray for Anthony because he was recently found out trying to get put on a kidney list. Amen? Amen. So we're going to pray, pray for him. Because, I mean, it doesn't seem like, you know, that could happen right away. Okay? You with me? Pray for him. Amen. Pray that God would have mercy on, open the door, and get a new kidney. Amen? Amen. Pray for you, Anthony. That's what you need. Prayer. To open up that door. Amen. I know they need the right blood type, the rare blood type, the better. We need, you need prayer. God, open the door. Allow Amen. Anthony Elvis Foster to get that new kidney in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll pray for you. We'll pray for you. People pray for, pray for him. And watch God do something. Because I think he needs it. He want to live the rest of his life on dialysis. Be much better, amen? amen. Be, co be courageous. Amen. Accept conflict. Know that's going to be there. Don't let it define you. Remain consistent. Remain consistent. And finally, you're more than a conqueror to him that loved us. Amen. With that said, stand up. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll come down. I'm going to play some. She's got, she got it. Um, thank you. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Thankful to be in church today. This represents a lot to me 23 years ago. And what, what we have today, and I'm thankful. We all need to be captains courageous and face our fears with courage. We need to learn to overcome conflict and not let it stop us. Remain consistent in what God asks us to do. And finally, enjoy the blessings of being a conqueror. So with that said, if you need to come to the altar this morning, why don't you come down and pray and ask God to give you a dose of that. Hey, my brother. That's it. Come down and pray, church. You need to pray. It's time to do it. Ask Him to give you the courage. Ask Him to give you the wisdom. Ask Him to increase your faith. Pray for the impossible. Ask God to do something. You know it's God. Didn't make any sense what He did in my life years ago. But I'm thankful for it. Maybe you just want to come down and thank God. Thank God that you're saved. Thank God that you're healthy. Thank God that you're in your right mind. Come on, talk to the Lord. Don't leave church without praying. Everybody, those that are down at the altar are praying, you praying in your pew. Pray, don't leave church without praying and asking God to touch your heart. Help us to be captains courageous, Lord. We can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me.
Okay, yeah. Very good. David, you want to come lead this one? David's consistent. He does what's asked of him. Hey, David. All right, let's stand up. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> 389, I am resolved. There we go. <clears throat> we'll do uh, 1, 3, and 5. Yes, sir. 1, 3, and 5. I am resolved. 389. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. <clears throat> These have allured my sight. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. On three. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. What he saith, do what he willeth, he is the living way. I will hasten, hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. On five, I am resolved, and who will go with me? Come, friends, without delay. By the Bible, led by the Spirit, we'll walk the heavenly way. I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to Thee. Back on, okay. Um, I was glad to see you in church today. Amen. Was it good to be in church? Amen. It's always good. And you know what? We have a great Savior. And the Lord's got a lot for us to do. Individually and corporately. And you can't quit. Don't let anything stop us. We get to where we need to go. Which is growing in the knowledge and grace of our Lord and Savior. And being that bright shining light in a dark world. And you don't know... Who you, whose life you could really affect. Just be who you are and let the love of Christ shine through you. And tell them about the Lord. You never know what will happen. So with that said, and today was a special day for me because of 23 years ago what happened to me. That's the date. I remember the date specifically. Um, it, was a, it, was, it was a birthday present for me that year. Yeah. Uh, that was like a little birthday present that year. But Anybody have a word of testimony? Something they'd like to say that might... Uh, coincide with what just was preached or something that God spoke to you about. I know that once I say let's close in word of prayer there will be a lot of conversation. Then I can't get you out of here. <laughs> Nancy. Oh, thank you. Okay, prep, take that. <laughs> good, praise all. I'm happy you're here, Nancy. We miss you guys and never stop praying for the mansmans. We never did. We're happy you're back. Amen. Amen. Good, Nancy. Yeah, I know. Tell John I said hi, and I know he's working seven days right now. It's like Big Bill had that problem. He's been working a lot, but we think of John. And good, praise the Lord. Good. Amen. Amen. And tell, do me a favor. 
Tell Joe yeah. that. He's in sales now. Tell, I know you told me. Tell Joe that See. Daniel's coming this week. Yeah. So maybe they come back and they could all get together. All right? Did they, Billy have his hand up? Yes. You know, and I thought, like, and I'm not the best Bible study here, but I know when something's right and when something's not right, you just know in your heart. Mm-hmm. And he was using the scripture very cleverly to talk about how God uh, predetermined, predetermined. Uh, yeah, predetermined, uh, that's right, like, preordained. So when I think about Jesus, when he said, you know, you all go for God, so love the world, he gave it all to God and Son, what a lie that would be if God just. Correct. 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 I will have mercy on who I have mercy and not as well not, which I don't He doesn't even know what he's talking about. Oh, I know he no, I, was, I was so thankful after I listened to that that I recognized immediately this guy's lying and all these people listen on the radio and he's very yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything, but it's a lie. So my the reason that I said this is I want to want to thank you for your decision for what you did with that. Mm-hmm. We're blessed to have somebody you know, a tool, or your tool, or you are a tool, or Absolutely. Amen, Billy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, very good. And by the way, I all have mercy on who I have mercy in, in, uh, in Romans 9 is quoting. What, what, what are you saying? And people get this mixed up all the time. He was talking about having mercy on Moses for showing him, revealing himself to Moses, not killing him. That's all he was talking about. And that, good, that God did in his own sovereignty. Okay, Moses, I'm going to show you my back part. You won't die. That's all he's referring to. In Romans 9, they quote that, and the Calvinists take that and go crazy with it, that God chooses. There they do. Crazy stuff, man. But I'm glad you, you are in the right place. Amen, Billy. Rob D. Did you really? Wow. Yeah, it was. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. <laughs> wow. It just shows like how the world is so wrapped up. Yes. Yes. No, you're right. You did. That's a great story. And that Scott Norm is like the biggest law firm in the world, right? We, it was a client. We, we serviced them at one point. The client, yeah, wow. Rosie. Yes, I want to wish you a very happy birthday. Thank you, darling. I don't know what, what I would do without you, because I'm looking forward to every Sunday that I could come here. Because you know how long. Yeah, I from the beginning. Also, thank you very much for encouraging us, because it's getting dark out there. Yeah. It's evil. Yeah. And, you know, Absolutely. we all know it. Yeah. And you strengthen us. Good, amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's what it is. Comes down to. Amen. Praise the Lord is right. My pleasure. Appreciate that, Rose. We love you, and you started. You what? You're like the core four. <laughs> you you were just from the beginning. You and mommy. And Renee, yeah, you go back to the very, yeah, it goes back to the very beginning. Yeah. Thank you, Rosie. Somebody else? Dr. Jim! You're a miracle. You're a miracle. Yes. Did you see the interview with him? He's a Christian. Oh, I know. Yes. 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 
It's in Westchester. Yeah. New Rochelle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not too far from my daughter. Yes, correct. Okay. But in the interview that I saw, I, th I think the case, though, okay. he never, he was never bashful about stating the fact that he was a Christian. No, correct. And he said, when he threw that ball, he prayed before. Yeah. And when he threw it, Jesus took over and it did what it did. Well, it's true. There's no other explanation. That's no, and nobody. And the funny thing is that Mar people don't realize Mariano Rivera played for the Yankees for all those years. Yes. He faced the same teams year after year. Yes. They saw him hundreds of times. Yes. They, and the closers only last a couple of years. Then, then they figure him out. Right. They, even when his velocity wasn't as great, they still couldn't hit his ball. Right. It was supernatural. Yes. It, was, it really was amazing. And he gave God the glory. Yes. He always gave God the glory. He, he did. Glory. Amen. Yes. Amen, Dr. Jim. Happy well, thank you, Mr. Courageous. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because thank you I'm for trying. Being courageous all these years. Trying. Fearful. Yeah. Many a time. Yeah. And I would just talk to you, and you, you. Once you put your hand to the plow, you never look back. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, don't worry, Burn. It's gonna be okay. Amen. And you just encouraged me. Encouraged my family. Encouraged our daughters. Amen. And I'm so thankful and grateful that we went on. Mm -hmm. And I know it was because of your courage. And one thing I've always loved about you is your courage. And Thank you. And you didn't care what anyone said. You didn't care what anyone thought. You knew what God told you to do. And me, I'd be like, oh, always comparing <laughs> and stuff. And God forgive me. But yeah. <laughs> my own yeah. insecurities. Mm -hmm. Like you've given me so much courage. Good, honey. Thank you. And Love you. Happy birthday. Thank you. And I'm so grateful to be by your side. And you surprised the daylights out of me. <laughs> I mean, you talk about giving me a heart attack. I opened the door. <laughs> Jen and I were standing outside. I said, what? <laughs> and what happened here? They got zapped here. I mean, it didn't make any sense. I, she goes, I thought I slipped. You didn't say anything. It was like so. She, she kept us on the wraps for a while, and that was pretty powerful. And I knew that would be your greatest that present. That was a great present. Yeah, it really was. Thank you, Jen and Emma. Glad you made it up here. All right, very good. Big Bill, it's good to see you back. Amen. We're happy you got in your home and you were gone for a while, but we kept praying for you. We know you're going through a lot there, but I'm glad to see you guys back. Amen. All right. Uh, anybody else? One last thing before we close it up? Marianne. I, I, by the way, I did see that whole thing that you. Left the message. I'm well aware of that, but yes, very good. There was that police officer in Texas who thought she was going into a school apartment, and he actually, I mean, he shot me and then he was on the phone. Geiger. His 18 year old brother was gay. Yeah. And yeah, it was an amazing thing. It's probably on YouTube. Oh, it is. And I mean, I forgive someone. Well, uh, no, it was crazy. I hope I would, but well, Marianne, you know what else? I don't, if, I don't know if you're aware of. After the brother forgave her and hugged her, the judge yeah. came down, gave her a Bible, and told her, said that the judge, she was crying. Even though, yeah, even though she was sentenced 10 years in jail, she said, you, gave her a Bible and said, well, you, did, you made a wrong decision. You, it affected your life. You're going to go to prison. But I'll give you a Bible. You need to find Christ and, and trust him. He can forgive you. Yeah, the judge. It was unbelievable. I mean, it's a terrible story, but I mean, there was something good came out of it, right? But it was a horrible account. It really was. But it was, a, it was quite a twist, exactly. All right, let's have a word of prayer and ask God to watch over us. Father, be with us and dismiss us with your blessing. Thank you for what you've done for us. Help us to give you all the glory and honor. Do your name. Help us to be courageous in our walks with you. And not let fear stop us. Get us home safe and give us a great day tomorrow at our work office or school or wherever the event, wherever the day has us going. Uh, be with us, Lord. And those who aren't feeling well, continue to help them and heal them up. And thank you for Kitty. Grandma Kitty's doing much better. Amen. She's really getting around. We'll be seeing her soon. Amen. Amen. And uh, watch over Anthony. Bless him with that new kidney. And thank you again for what you've done here. Dismiss us with your blessing. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
いむしろもうちょいいね。